So I'm asking the city to help us address the lock gate issue um, because the, the lease agreement is between the American Legion and the city of Kennett for us to do business out there. But also as a fire and health safety issue, I feel unsafe uh, knowing that we could not get out <coughs> today or people could not get to us if there was a problem. So I had I attempted to contact the American Legion today and I, I did not receive <coughs> any return calls and I was not able to reach them. So I'm gonna ask if the, maybe the fire department or the <coughs> can help us with that. I'm not opposed to the gate being closed. I understand that there are some other issues and maybe we want, we want to prohibit large traffic, but the fact that my lawn care company couldn't get in, the postal service can't get in, I think those are reasons that it should not be padlocked. Do we have an easement there that's been reported? And it's on record in, at that particular gate? Um, no, I just have the lease. I have a copy of the lease agreement, and it specifically says um, the right of ingress and egress to and from said building. The premises lease includes the parking area adjacent to the Chamber of Commerce office building. Um, and then also in here it says we, we should not you know, be prohibited to from doing business. And who is it that you've contacted? I attempted to contact the posted legion number. It's 573. Five five nine five six five seven, and was not able to get a response. I also talked to three different either citizens or businesses today who were trying to reach the Legion for various purposes, and they were just contacting us trying to figure out how to get a hold of them. So I know of at least four people who were trying to contact them today about something. But I don't have any phone numbers of individual members to contact or whatever. So. Okay. Uh, what is the chain of command out at the American uh, Legion? Anybody here part of the American Legion? No, Terry, you have any recommendations for what we need to do? Well, I'm a member of the American Legion, but I have no involvement. Okay. Uh, say, no, I think having the, the fire department make contact okay. is a good idea. It, it does limit, greatly limits. Mm -hmm. Well, the fire truck couldn't get back there if there was a fire. And there's no reason to do that. If anybody needs help for me on that, I'd, I'd be glad to help the fire department. Okay. Do, do we own the building that the chamber is in? or? Yes, yeah, so our lease, uh, we have so a 99 year lease. We're leasing the ground and we, do we own the building? Yes. Um, the lease agreement began July 1st, 1986 and expires on June 30th, 2085 at a rate of one dollar per year and we have the receipt where that that whole one hundred dollars was paid up front. Okay. All right. Thank you. All right, thank, thank you. you all. All right. Um finance. I don't have much to report. We don't have any numbers for the last month, but uh, we did have a special meeting last Tuesday and we did approve the the budget for the upcoming year. Okay. And we'll keep monitoring the numbers as they come in monthly <coughs> and quarterly and um, we'll go from there.
pretty busy throughout the night. During the day, it wasn't bad. It wasn't as bad as it had been in the previous. But I didn't know the fire department ran pretty hard yesterday on, on several different fires. I don't know which one of them were firework related. I can't comment on that part. I just do know they were very busy. Uh, a lot of our calls based on the misuse of the fireworks. And I think that's something we can address at a later time. Uh, next week, we got several officers going to let that training. The let's that training has a lot to do with how much we participate in this training. Also dictates how much uh, money we get in MoDOT grants. So we got about four or five officers going to this training. It's very good training. It also makes us eligible for more funds the more we participate. So we're going to try to send at least four or five officers this week. Uh, again, this dictates how much we get in our DWI enforcement and speed enforcement grants. Well, other than that, that's all I have unless anyone has any questions. <coughs> uh, thank you. Thank you. Thanks, Chief. I've known everybody's going to keep it short. I wouldn't work so hard on this. <laughs> Thanks for your report. <laughs> uh, we've got a few things, but they're they're short. Robertson Asphalt has uh, finished up the overlays of our our existing streets and uh, they laid 969 tons over the existing asphalt and uh, 1,950 tons over gravel streets. So we got several little things. We got uh, nine gravel roads paved and uh, eight that were already asphalted redone. <coughs> but the tonnage was a lot more on the gravel. Key equipment is going to come next week and sweep again, and they're still saying the sweeper should be here by the end of next month, or the end of this month. Now we're into this month. <coughs> Tag truck called today, and they uh, gave us a report on the truck that had been turned over, and uh, I tried to get a hold of the insurance company and didn't get them, but I didn't get this until late this afternoon, so I'm going to try again tomorrow to get a hold of them, and see if they uh, tell us to proceed with it. It's going to be $17,942. There was a cylinder, one bent, and the hangers, a couple of them messed up, and several other small issues, some body damage and stuff. Knuckles <coughs> Contractors is working on Sanders and uh, Kenwood. They started today, I think. And they're going to try to get it done midweek and start on David and Clayton and try to have it wound up by the weekend. But it'll start with probably David and Clayton will probably be closer to the weekend and give it the time that it needs to set. After that, they'll be moving to the south side of town, south of uh, St. Francis. <coughs> the street department poured uh, 70 feet of sidewalk on Ballard and Walnut last week. And we're setting up about 180 feet right now on South Jackson, or uh, North Jackson and uh, Washington Street. So we we'll hope to hope to get ready by Thursday and have it for by the weekend. And that's all we've got for the week. Good. Unless y'all got something. I do. Uh, you know offhand what's the minimum height requirement for overhead lines in, in the city? I'm going to say it's probably going to be about 13 feet because that's what a lot of semis are, but I don't know if there is, uh, I don't know if there is one. No one that's on it? I know. What is it? 15 feet. Okay. 15 feet on a roadway, uh, going to a house, it's uh, 10 feet. We need to take a look at some in the Watson Edition. Uh, gentleman up there building the house now, concrete trucks came through the other day tore down several of uh, the lines. Obviously none of them were live. I believe they're just cable vision lines, but I got to look and they, some of them are extremely low. Well now, uh, that's 15 feet on power. Uh, secondary cable vision, I don't know that there is a height requirement. Okay. Uh, I know most of my truck trailers are 13, and, and that's usually what, 13 I think six. on the interstate, yeah, it's usually what they're marked, we're, minimum 13. Yeah, we're 13-6 yeah. we're, we're legal. But then we've got the, the trash trucks and the UPS, and even our grader is right, it's pushing 11 or 12 feet tall, so. And if you get a very large antenna, you're we, we, Yeah, <coughs> we, we hit them with the grader.
grader and stuff before where they've been sagging. We pulled some cable weed in out before. Cool. I think you're going to come up and we'll go through this. Uh, Victor's going to give a report here. First of all, I want you to, uh, the sewer company has come in town, or which should be maybe starting tonight even, and uh, just uh, they're expected to complete the work by the end of the week. Total cost is going to be somewhere around $94,000. So hopefully it's going to be well worth that. Um, the Bo Ryan estate issue that we've been talking about, mm -hmm. uh, letters have been sent to the residents and uh, informing them that their fences can be placed, uh, where their place, fences can be placed. Also, uh, the letter includes a plot map, a plat map which shows a drainage easement for the addition. Uh, and uh, we're starting mowing on Buffalo Ditch and uh, with the excavator right now. So continue to work on that. Victor? Uh, I was notified uh, last Friday from the Department of Natural Resources and I received the email today with all the instructions that uh, we will be uh, having a uh, full stormwater audit uh, August the 2nd and 3rd today. Uh, that'll consist of a bunch of paperwork. Uh, I will have to go with them to do uh, separate inspections on construction sites. Uh, they're going to want to look at ditches. We're going to walk ditches. We're going to. Uh, they're going to look at all the mapping. Uh, several, several, several things. Uh, I just need to make known to all the uh, department heads that we will be inspecting all city facilities. Uh, so housekeeping is a must. So if, there's, if you've got any kind of bucket sitting around or 